The date is June 6, 2011, a nice early evening out here in Vancouver. Everyone is settling in to get ready for Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals in TD Garden. Vancouver had won Game 1 and Game 2. They were up 2-0 in the series. Boston was looking to climb back. Once the game starts, it's a nice, clean start so far. Everyone's anticipating what's going to happen. This series had already been filled with shenanigans from the first two games. These two teams wanted to get back at each other, and Vancouver had the edge with two games in hand. The Canucks were playing a nice game, the Bruins are playing a game as well. These two teams getting the feel of TD Garden in the Stanley Cup Finals. The crowd is going wild. But five minutes and seven seconds into the first period, Vancouver's Aaron Rome on the third pairing gives out a late hit to the head with his left shoulder to Nathan Horton. Horton collapses on the ice and... He does that little thing where he puts his hand up. Puts his hand up while he's laying flat down on the ice. Everybody is panicking. They bring the medics out. They stretcher him out. He has to go to the hospital. Aaron Rome gets suspended for four games. The first multi-game suspension in the Stanley Cup Finals history. And the Bruins win this game. Game 3 with a score of 8-1. to one. The Bruins would go on to win the series 4-3 in Game 7 with a 4-0 shutout in Vancouver. I'd like to first indicate that the Canucks played with 9 defensemen in this series. We had the Edler-Salo pairing, we had Hamus and Bieksa, and Roman Erhoff. We also had the introductions of Andrew Alberts, Keith Ballard, and 21-year-old defenseman Chris Tanev. Now, the suspension of four games for Aaron Rome, this threw everyone off. The Bruins, they became angry, and they got in the Canucks' heads. There were already more shenanigans in the games, and this event right here sparked even more. There seemed to be a pure hatred between both of these teams once the series really got going. Tim Thomas played fantastically setting the best statistical records for any goaltender in any Stanley Cup Finals in the history of the NHL, in terms of save percentage, shots against, and all of that stuff. He was fantastic, and he broke several Stanley Cup records against the Vancouver Canucks. And the Canucks, they lost their edge. We all know what happens next. The other games happened, the Bruins won, but I want to propose the question here. What if Aaron Rome never made that hit? Of course, the obvious answer is that both of these players, Horton and Aaron Rome, would have still been playing in the series. They probably would have continued. But would the heat have been as strong? Would the hatred have been as strong? Would the Bruins feel as much of a need to play their hearts out, not saying that they wouldn't have played their hearts out if Aaron Rome never made that hit, but I feel like everything was exemplified because of the hit. Would the Bruins have been as strong? Would Thomas have been as strong? Would he have had the kind of Stanley Cup final series that he did where he set all these records? Would Marchand have been as strong on the puck and as annoying as he was in the series? I think not. I think that this hit from Aaron Rome catalyzed a strong series of events that led to the Canucks losing their edge. But first off, I'm not going to blame the entire Bruins Cup win over Aaron Rome. That would be irrational. I'm not making this video as an excuse to say why the Canucks lost the Cup as the President's Trophy team. But as this stands, I truly believe that with Rome's actions, and the issues and concerns of the Canucks' defensive core and overall morale faced because of this, the Canucks' chances of winning significantly decreased once the bear had been woken up. Once Thomas put on his A-game, once the series got acrimonious, once Luongo stopped being Luongo, 
once the Canucks had to play more defensemen, once guys like 21-year-old Chris Tanev had to step into the lineup, once Mason Raymond fractured his vertebrae because of an awkward hit from Boychuk, 20 seconds in the game 6, which caused Jeff Tambellini to play in game 7 as the replacement on that second line. This series was a series where, on the outside, the two teams looked like they genuinely hated each other, and where Boston had the definite edge. 23 goals to 8 goals, how did the Canucks win 3 games, one might ask? Game 3 is where the Blitz had started. An 8-1 loss in Game 3. 4-0 in Games 4 and 7, and 5-2 in Game 6. The Canucks were controlled by the Bruins. The Bruins were angrier and they fought harder. The Canucks were thrown off by... everything. And I believe that all of this, all of these feelings, all the determinations from either side, all the replacements and all the new players, all of the mind games, all of this started when Aaron Rome hit Nathan Horton in the head with his own left shoulder five minutes and seven seconds into the first period of Game 3 when the game was tied at zero. Would the Canucks have won the cup if Horton never made that hit? Who knows? No one's ever going to know. No one's ever going to know because we can't change the past. But the likelihood of the Canucks winning, the chances that the Canucks had, the overall outlook on the team was that they were definitely in it to win it, and all of that went down the drain once the Bruins woke up. Once Aaron Rome woke up the Bruins with a hit to Nathan Horton. Who knows? No one knows. But I'm trying to put out that question here. What if Nathan Horton was never hit? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sure, awesome. Like, subscribe, and gaming. And bye.